Well, thank you for the invitation for this seminar to Professor uh, Ludger Pierce and uh, Kubilai for uh, the technical help uh, for this uh, conference. I am Professor uh, Jorge Duran from the University of uh, Guadalajara, and I was uh, working uh, in Mexican migration to the United States for the last uh, 35 years, I think so, and also with the Latin American migration to the United States and uh, intra-regional migration and uh, to Europe. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the presentations for today will be about the Mexican seasonal workers in the United States. The structure of my presentation uh, have uh, three different parts. At the beginning, if a, a, an introduction to the Mexican migration uh, is an historical view because the workers, uh, uh, Mexican workers in the agriculture, there were, you know, for more than a century in, uh, in all around the United States working on that. Then uh, I will uh, talk about the temporary migrant, migrant workers for the agriculture. This is a, a, a last program, not uh, uh, really new one because there are more than 40 years that, that they were working with this uh, work of temporary migrants. No? And at the end, I will uh, um, go to the uh, situation uh, that we have today with uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, and the uh, workers in the United States, but also uh, what is going on uh, in Mexico with uh, uh, migrant workers. So at the, uh, uh, when we try to understand uh, the Mexican migration, uh, we must uh, think uh, anytime in three premises. Historicity, because it's more than a centennial process. Vicinity, because we are neighbors. And the scale. You know, there is a massive migration. There are many, many people, you know, Mexicans working in the United States. Uh, historicity begins, you know, in the 19th century because there were many Chinese workers who arrived to California and they work in the railroad. But in 1882, was a, a Chinese Exclusion Act that uh, they don't permit for more, you know, Chinese workers to come to the United States. That's the first uh, um, properly uh, racist uh, law no, against the Chinese uh, population. So when the uh, 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 entrepreneurs lose these workers, they were looking uh, to the Mexican supply, because at that time, in, in 1884, there uh, was the connection of the railroad between Mexico and all the United States. So they were looking for workers in Mexico, and uh, that's the beginning of a process for more than a century that every day is crossing the border, you know, one Mexican to work in the United States, and every day the Americans were, you know, returning one worker that they don't have documents to work in the United States. To, uh, to add, uh, you know, the Chinese exclusion, in 1907, there is an, another exclusion act against the Japanese, so they need more uh, 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 workers, uh, and they were looking for Mexicans because there is another law that this is forbidden uh, to recruit workers outside the United States. So if you remember, you know, the, the big migration that they were coming from Italy, from Spain, from uh, Germany to the United States, many, they have a contract to go to the United States. But with this law in 1904, uh, uh, oh, 
for, uh, 1914 was forbidden to contract workers outside the United States. So what do the Americans? They put, you know, this, is, this photo is about Chinese workings, uh, you know, in the uh, transcontinental uh, railroad. And they have, you know, employment agencies at the border. This is the, 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 the Alamo City Employment Agency in, uh, uh, in Texas, no? and they contract Mexican, the, the Mexicans cross the border without any problem, and they have a contract so they can stay in the United States to go all, uh, all around the United States. And uh, the majority of the workers at that moment, they work, you know, in uh, the train connection. That's uh, really important uh, at the beginning of the 20th century that the Mexicans, they uh, were working in uh, the, not only the construction, but also with, uh, 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 in everyday work all around the route of the railroad. And the other important uh, labor market for Mexican is, was, you know, the agricultural. So they were legal work workers. They have a contract you know, and they uh, work in different uh, parts of the United States. You know. But uh, especially with the train connection, they move to different parts of uh, the United States. So another, uh, the other point, important point uh, to understand uh, the Mexican migration is the vicinity. There are more than 3,000 kilo, kilometers of border. Uh, and this is a porous and asymmetric border. The difference between the United States and uh, uh, Mexico is, is so big, it's still is, is so big, but uh, the border is, uh, you know, so dynamic and is growing and growing, you know, uh, uh, about the years. There are um, 11 sister cities, like, for example, San Diego and uh, Tijuana, El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, and uh, many times they have, uh, you know, the same name. Nogales in Mexico and Nogales in the United States. Laredo in Mexico and Laredo in the United States. But at the beginning of the century, there are no population around, uh, uh, around the border. But now we have big cities like uh, uh, Tijuana and Ciudad Juarez that they have more than a million people. Huh? So now is uh, an inhabited uh, 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 part of Mexico and the United States. This is a map uh, of Mexico, huh? but if you uh, can see, uh, you know, um, the part, uh, the dark part was Mexico before the war against the United States. So Mexico lose uh, a half of the territory. Mm -hmm. So if we have uh, this, this border, then there are here 3,000 kilometers. Here, there are more than 5,000 kilometers. And Mexico lose not only California, but Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Utah, Nevada, parts of Colorado, and uh, Oklahoma. So uh, part of this history, you know, and uh, are, you know, the problems between Mexico and historical problems between Mexico and the United States. And uh, we have many conflicts at the border because, uh, you know, the Americans uh, try to move to the south you know, and take more territory. For example, this, this part, you know, was not uh, 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 the United States, but they have a, you know, a, an incredible pressure to Mexico that uh, they uh, will sell this part of the territory because they need it, uh, you know, for, uh, to pass the railroad. And uh, they always, uh, you know, have a, uh, 
uh, the idea to take uh, the Baja California. But, uh, here is the Baja California, here is uh, 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 Tijuana. Huh? So there are, you know, uh, many problems, you know, uh, 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 around this uh, large, uh, really large border between Mexico and the United States. But also the migrants can go to Texas or to uh, Nuevo Mexico, Arizona, California. So this is, you know, uh, uh, the, the way to cross the border is really easy because this is a, a solemn border. And uh, also um, we are neighbors, but one important point is, you know, the power asymmetry. Uh, you know, be a neighbor of uh, the United States was so complicated. And you can imagine uh, the situation today. This is, you know, uh, this cartoon is with President Bush, and that's the beginning, you know, of the uh, uh, the wall, you know, at the border, you know, and Mexico don't, don't want it. You know? uh, and today, you know, that uh, one of the most important target uh, of the President of the United States is, uh, you know, uh, to build the wall. Huh? And uh, he was trying that uh, Mexico will pay for that. And here you can see uh, in one side, huh? um, Tijuana and in the other, uh, in the other side, uh, uh, San Diego. Uh, Tijuana is a, is a big city, you know, with more than a million, million and a half uh, uh, population that they were coming from all around Mexico. And now there are many people who are coming from different uh, parts of the world that, that they were trying to cross the United States, but they can do it. So they are living now in, uh, in, uh, in Mexico. The other important characteristic is, you know, the massive migration. This is, you know, not for today, but uh, from uh, uh, all times. In 1920, uh, the professor Gami was the, the, the first, uh, you know, academic uh, research about uh, uh, Mexican migration to the United States. Uh, he estimated one mil million of uh, Mexican workers in the United States, and that was, you know, 10% of the population at that time. In 1929, with the crack in a uh, crack economy in the United States, they deported uh, half a million. In 1942 to 64, they uh, contract uh, more than 5 million people. Huh? Uh, legal workers to work in the agriculture uh, in this year. And also they passed another 5 million no, without papers. In 1986, there was a, 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 another law about uh, migration law, uh, and uh, there is an amnesty and a legalization process, or, and they were granted 2.3 million Mexicans that they were living and now they have, a, you know, a green card or were uh, American. But in 2007, the, it was, you know, the peak of the undocumented migration, 7 million. But now, today, there are around 5 million. So uh, th this is an important change of the Mexican migration. You know, the, the illegal migration is, is going down and the legal migration is going up. But in 2020, still, you know, 10% of the Mexican population were living in the United States. So when you were talking about Mexican migration, you know, history is really important, vicinity and the numbers. So these are, you know, three special characteristics to understand uh, Mexican migration to the United States. And there is a connection, important connection between the wars and labor worker. Why? Because uh, uh, 
when the soldiers were going to fight in Europe or, Europe or in the Pacific or where, uh, in any place, you know, the people who, need, uh, who must work in the agriculture were the Mexicans. So in any war, you know, the United States were looking south for Mexicans to work, especially in the agriculture. For example, this is an ad uh, from 1917 in Kansas City, eh? and there uh, was a company, the Burlington Route, is a, a railroad company, and they say that we need Mexicans, they don't need workers, they say we need Mexican workers for the states of Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, Montana, South Dakota, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri. So they were, you know, thousands of Mexican workers going to all these states to work in the railroad uh, companies. And that's the, that's the same for the agricultural. No, this is a, a migrant worker camp in uh, uh, California, and they were moving, you know, in these, uh, you know, cars or trucks, you know, all around uh, to, to California to work in the different harvests. In the, uh, with the Second World War, uh, uh, there was a special program to recruit Mexican, uh, that's the name of the Bracero program. This is the first group of Mexicans who works, who go to the United States, and you can see, you know, there, you know, that they put, uh, of democracies will be the victory. The, the, the V of the victory was part of the relation between the allies, between Mexico and the United States. And the way that Mexico participated in the Second World War was, you know, sending workers, workers for the agricultural in the United States. But this uh, 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 program stays for more than 22 years, you know, between 42 and 64. There were uh, 5 million contract workers, braceros, you know, and another five million that pass uh, to work in the United States. And, uh, but there were, you know, many problems because there is a negotiation every year about the Brazil program, how many workers uh, will, will go and uh, to what places, in what conditions, what will be the, the salary, but when, uh, the, the negotiation between Mexico and the, the, the United States doesn't work. You know? the, uh, the Americans open the border and they, uh, 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 there is an expression to dry in braceros because uh, the, the uh, undocumented braceros, uh, they, they call it, you know, wet back. You know? So they dry the braceros you know, and they legalize the, the uh, workers who are crossing uh, the border. But an important point is that this program, the Bracero program, is a, a, an idea of selectivity by gender, age, peasant origin, and agricultural destination. So they try uh, um, to, to form, huh? and a specialized labor force for agriculture. They, uh, this, there is a process of construction of this kind of uh, 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 special workers for the agricultural in the United States. And they succeeded because still, you know, there are more than 2 million Mexican workers working in, in, in the camps in uh, the agricultural in, uh, uh, in the United States. So when they, they open this program, there are many Mexicans that they want to go to the United States to work because they, uh, the salaries will be in dollars, you know, 
and they uh, uh, they have the opportunity to go to another country and uh, uh, the difference between the salaries in Mexico and the United States is so big so many people they will try to go to the uh, uh, United States and have a contract but this uh, uh, picture is really important because that's the first date that is going, you know, the railroad, uh, the, the, the train is going, you know, to the United States with Braceros. And you can see only men here, you know, and the women, the women here that they were waiting. So this selectivity was, you know, really important. They don't want families like in other times. They don't want only people who works and can work in the agricultural. So this process of selectivity was really uh, uh, important at that uh, uh, time. This is uh, the, 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 uh, the vagon with the Mexican workers going to the United States. You can see, uh, 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 for example, if you look at the huts, here you can see uh, a campesino, no? From, from rural areas. And here you can see somebody, you know, from the city. Eh? So there is a mix of people uh, uh, who are coming from cities or from rural areas, but the Americans, they don't want people from the city because they are not really good workers uh, 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 on the field. And there are many ideas, you know, for example, this is a, a, a manual, you know, for, uh, English for Braceros, so they can understand some uh, words in English. But uh, if you go to the fields today in the United States, they all speak Spanish. There is, uh, and the, the, the brokers, you know, the mayordomos, uh, uh, all are bilinguals, and that's the connection with the employers. So, uh, now, uh, um, all the work in the agricultural, uh, you know, the pickers are, you know, 100% Mexicans, and this is a, a special labor market for Mexicans. You can see, you know, the, the uh, you know, in the 1950s, uh, you know, the truck is going inside the field, uh, and that's uh, the process of mechanization of the uh, agricultural in the United States. But this uh, 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 um, era of the Bracero program was, uh, you know, complicated, you know, in uh, um, 54, for example, there was a wetback operation and they were deported one million people, you know, to Mexico. This is, you know, 50, uh, 53. Eh? But if you look the, 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 the other chart, eh? here is, uh, you know, the, uh, the numbers for the, the Brasher program, no? And here in 53, we have a deportation eh? uh, uh, of one million workers, but the next year, they, they contract were, you know, around uh, half a million. Huh? So uh, if they can deport the workers who, who are in the agriculture without papers, without legal papers, still they need, you know, more and more workers for agriculture. So, the end of the Bracero program was in 64, and that's the beginning of a new, new system. That's the undocumented era. And here we can see the uh, Mexican workers crossing the, uh, the Rio Bravo. So uh, uh, at the end of the Bracero program, no, they, they uh, realized that they, they can uh, receive workers you know, without all this bureaucracy and all these contracts and uh, negotiation uh, with Mexico. So they imagine that this is a, a, a perfect model, you know, that they have a, a 
the needs of the labor market are provided, no? They don't need to bilateral contracts between countries, no bureaucracy, no, and no cost for governments and employers. So the Mexicans workers, they develop the social networks and they go to different places of the United States and was the market that organize all this uh, system to work in the agriculture. But uh, they don't cross only, you know, by uh, the Rio Bravo. The Rio Bravo is the border with Texas, no? But they work, uh, they cross the border, you know, that's the border in the 1980s, no? And you can see all these heads are, you know, Mexicans that they were uh, waiting the night to cross. They are in the United States, no? And these uh, young uh, people with uh, jumping uh, 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 the wall, no? and crossing to the United States. But also, you know, there are other migrants, they, they, they try to cross, you know, by the desert, you know, to uh, uh, Arizona. And so there are many migrants crossing by Texas, by Arizona, or by uh, um, uh, Tijuana and uh, California. So this system doesn't work very well because all the Mexicans workers were undocumented. So this is not a legal process. No? They promote it, but they don't want it. So in 1986 was, you know, a, a, a new law, the Immigration Reform and Control Act, and they decide to legalize no, these workers in the United States. So there is a process of legalization of 2.3 million Mexicans. Mm? There was a special program for agricultural. Mm? And what happened? That the uh, workers in the agricultural, when they have a green card, they move to other jobs. So they, they pass from the full sun to the air conditioned. And at that time, in 1980s, it was, you know, there a really great migration from Mexico, no? because that's the change of the economical model. We, uh, we passed from uh, 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 the export substitution uh, system to uh, uh, the neoliberal system. No? So there are a, a big economical crisis in Mexico. So there are many Mexicans going to the United States, but also there was the war, the civil wars in Central America. So begins the Central American migration. But when you have more than 2 million Mexican with documents, you know, the Mexican uh, community was consolidated uh, and because they were, they were, you know, legal and they bring the families and was, uh, you know, really uh, the most important point for the Mexican uh, community. Uh. And, uh, but still the Americans need workers so they have a new visa program for the agricultural. And this is, you know, the, uh, the visas, uh, H2 uh, visas, uh, H2A visa for the agricultural and H2B uh, visas for uh, the services. So there are more than uh, around uh, 250,000 temporal workers going, you know, every day to the agricultural uh, and to the services, no? legal workers to, to cross every year to work in the United States. So uh, they uh, uh, so it's, they try different uh, 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 ways to solve the problem, uh, to have uh, 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 the amount of people necessary for work in the fields, but still it's not easy to solve the problem. So we can see, you know, uh, today, you know, seasonal workers, but today, you know, that there are in these fields, there are 
three harvests a year. So there are not really seasonal workers because they were working almost, you know, nine months uh, a year. So many of the workers stayed you know, the whole year in the United States. So uh, um, there is a, an incredible process of uh, mechanization in the, the United States, but still they need two million farm workers you know, uh, uh, to go every year. But they, the majority were, 90% were Mexicans, and 85% are today undocumented. And also, there is an important uh, difference between the, uh, uh, there is a gap between the, the people who work with unions, that, that they have a better salary than the people who work in, uh, uh, with uh, uh, and other contractors, and they don't have documents. And they provide for that, you know. Uh, they, they like, you know, uh, uh, undocumented workers because they pay less. There is a professor who say that the Texans were obsessed with cheap uh, labor, and this is true. And you can see uh, the process of mechanization of the agricultural in the United States. And today, all these people are working uh, on the fields. There is no unemployment in, uh, uh, in the fields in the United States. So with coronavirus and with uh, uh, all this uh, pandemic, uh, still, you know, every worker in the agricultural, uh, you know, has uh, uh, a job. But what happened? You know, there are many restrictions to mobility with the coronavirus in the United States. But the Mexicans workers, the, the works who works in the agriculture, they have a special permit. Huh? Uh, and, um, and this is, you know, for the Pacific farm. Huh? And the, the document says the employee may leave the residence to perform work that is critical infrastructure. So uh, there is no any limitation, you know, for the agricultural workers to move uh, uh, to work because this is critical for uh, the United States. So this is the, the condition that uh, they were working today. They have the permit to go to work. Huh? And sometimes it's complicated because sometimes they go, uh, you know, in cars and uh, they don't uh, have the possibility to, to go more than two people in a car. So there are some problems, but uh, you know, the employers, they were moving and they were, you know, working. Uh, uh, in different ways to solve the problem because they need workers you know, to uh, work in the agriculture. And what happened in Mexico, because you, you know we have a population of uh, uh, Mexicans in the United States you know, with uh, some problems uh, uh, with uh, 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 the coronavirus. There were, uh, you know, uh, more than uh, a thousand Mexicans dead in uh, New York City uh, and around 300 in uh, California, but Mexico is not only a sending country, it's also a receiving country and a returning country and a transit migration country. So there are around a uh, floating population around uh, 200,000 foreign people uh, in immobility. There were some detention camps in Mexico, around 5,000. There are refugees you know, and refugee applicants, more than 70,000 uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, people. There are refugee applicants in the United States that they were returned to Mexico more than uh, 60,000. They are asylum seekers waiting in Mexico 
to go to the United States, to apply in the United States. Hmm? And there were, you know, uh, uh, migrants in transit uh, by the territory. For example, uh, uh, this is something new for Mexico, but there are uh, migrants who are coming from Cameroon, from uh, 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 Kenya, different parts of uh, Africa, then they cross, uh, you know, the Atlantic, they go to different parts in South America, uh, mostly to, to Ecuador, and they were, you know, uh, uh, walking uh, you know, to the north, and now they were in Mexico. Uh, and this is part of this uh, 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 transit migration that have, you know, incredible problems with the pandemia and the uh, uh, coronavirus because they, uh, we don't have in Mexico the infrastructure, you know, to uh, 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 keep in, in good uh, 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 shape uh, all these people who are moving all around uh, uh, Mexico and trying to go to the United States. So finally, I have some points to discussion you know, and, uh, about this uh, general uh, landscape uh, of the Mexican migration with a, a special focus in the agricultural workers. You know? And uh, my, uh, the first point is, what does mean, you know, critical infrastructure? Because they use these words you know, in this permit for the uh, 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 Mexican workers that they work in the agriculture. Um, today or, or in the future, agricultural is a matter of national security. And undocumented migration is a matter of national security. So what, uh, how we can solve the problem that every country needs agriculture, also, especially in this situation like the pandemic. Uh, so this is a, 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 um, an issue for national security. But your workers in the, uh, in, in the American case are undocumented. And Irregular migration is also an issue of national security. And finally, you know, um, what is you know, the impact of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, you know, regarding Mexican workers, you know, migrant workers all around the world, you know, that uh, they were you know, in, in every country uh, of the north, you know, in Canada, in Germany, in France, in Italy. Uh, you know, some weeks ago, uh, uh, the Italians legalized more than uh, 600,000 know, agricultural workers you know, because they need it. So we have, you know, a, a, a new situation with the coronavirus and all these uh, pandemia. Well, uh, thank you for uh, your time and here are some uh, information that uh, you can uh, have it if you want to communicate with me. Thank you.